would be. Yeah. He, do you, you realise that the owl did... Uh, I'll just put this out there. It yeah. did happen. No, it happened. We've got to be honest about these things. Yeah. The owl did do a little poo on the sofa. Yeah. I felt like I've learned something, because I thought owl poo was sort of pelletty. No, no, no. But it's not, is it? It's like proper. People are eating their no, breakfast. Not, fact, People are eating their breakfast. I'm just so. okay, sorry. a little bit there. Yeah. There we go. But it's good to... I feel like I've sort of educated myself. I haven't educated myself. I didn't, I didn't make the owl do that, but... It's good to learn. It did, it it's did happen, it did do actually, it just when as you were Yeah, in, it did, yeah. It well, happens. everybody gets nervous around celebrities, do you know what I mean? Right. So it happens to... <laughs> but on happens that, to the best of us. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm segueing nicely. You see, you talk about educating there, because a lot of people may not know yeah. that you were a teacher. I was, That yeah. was your career. I say you were a teacher like it happened sort of one day, but that was your career. You, you... I was a maths teacher, yeah, and I had a sixth form. Yeah, I did it for, like, eight years or something like that. And then... Uh, so I was teaching for a while, and then I just thought, I don't want my career to be about helping people anymore. So I just decided to do something which I feel is more rewarding, which is putting myself at centre stage, you know what I mean? Can it's... I just ask, before we go into the, the, all the other stuff in the book, you as a teacher, I yeah. mean, you're, you're, your kind of way is, you're, uh, you're quite, sort of, quite deadpan, and this is the comedy, I understand, it's not necessarily your, your personality. I know, but... it's all me. Um, as a teacher, were you were you like that as a teacher? Was it a bit, you know, yeah, were you a bit withering with your, with the kids and stuff? Uh, I, well, I never, I don't, rec I sort of don't recall raising my voice much as a teacher. I was pretty chilled out, but I, I actually think it works better. Like I would, I'd get quieter if uh, children were upsetting me. You know, just sort of say, "What you're doing now is causing me a problem in the lesson," and it would be sort of almost borderline sinister. It, yeah, it's, it's no, sort it sort of works. Yeah, I get it. I went for. yeah, also in the book, you refer to a point where you just threatened to g kick one kid out of the classroom and just said, well, I don't want to be here anyway. So yeah, that well, didn't that, quite work. No, well, that's the problem, is that actually teachers' authority... I mean, I don't want to sort of ruin it for teachers out there, but it's fake, isn't it? It all depends on the children wanting to be in the classroom and being at school. So if you threaten to exclude a kid that doesn't want to be there, essentially you're giving them a prize. Mm. Um, it's, it's a performance of sorts, is all I was going to say. Is yeah. Teaching, you're in front of a... You know, it is a kind of stand-up, isn't it? Because you've got to do a routine, get their attention, yeah, and know, to make and, it work. Yeah, and it's more difficult than stand-up, because with stand-up you can talk about whatever you want, where with teaching... You have to occupy the children for an hour and you're talking about fractions. You're sort of limited in your subject matter, do you know what I mean? So, it is tough. Can we talk about your mum, please? Yeah, I, mean, your I don't mum, want to, I, but I, yeah, sure. Well, your mum's quite a big part of your career yeah. and some programmes you've done. And um, I love the, the fact that she used to send you to school um, with loads of jam sandwiches to eat in the break before your school dinners yeah. and ignored it when the teachers were a bit concerned about your weight. Does she still feed you as a... You know, is she still a... Feeder. Yes, she is. I mean, my mum is uh, in the Sri Lankan tradition of giving their children loads of food and then criticising them for being overweight. Yes. That's sort of that's yes. my that's my mum's strategy. And now what my mum does is because she believes that I don't get enough Sri Lankan food, she drops off care packages as if like <laughs> I am in some sort of barren area. I mean, I'm I, I can make food for myself, but every now and again, normally when my wife's just finishing dinner. There'll be a knock on the door, and then my mum will go, Darling, I don't know if you've got food here, so <laughs> I've got enough for the next two weeks. And then, like, our freezer's full of, full of curry, basically. It's good. I mean, I'm not complaining. I don't want mum to stop doing it. No, no, it's no, great. it's great. And she's been part of the programmes you've made yes. as well. And um, kind of gone off on tangents and be is a star in her own right. Yeah, it's an unfortunate byproduct of having her on the show, uh, is that she what has her become... Success. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, listen, what I was sort of hoping for... You know, I said to her, I want you to be on the show, I think you'd be funny, but I wanted it to be very much a secondary thing to me. She was Do you your know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what's happened is that people, I started getting tweets and stuff from people saying, oh, how come your mum's naturally funnier than you are? And, <laughs> and obviously that is, that is difficult to take, yeah. you know? And so I've gradually spent the following kind of years trying to just shift her out. Shift around. Uh, in uh, in the book, you talk a lot about family, and that's yeah. a great source of comedy. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, you know, families can be really funny. But you talk very honestly about your dad. Yes. And and so you know some of the uh, the problems he had over the years. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, because it's stuff people won't necessarily that people won't know. Yeah. Well, um, I had to sort of check with my mum actually that she was okay with me writing about that stuff because my dad uh, he went through a lot of difficulties. You know, he. Uh, we ended up getting our house repossessed. We were my dad sort of uh, was a bit was quite philanderous, and uh, he ended up going to, to prison for a short time. And so and all of that we went from 
being very comfortable and then everything got turned upside down and then we were sort of cut to us like being in like this sort of council bed and breakfast trying to uh, trying to get back to where we were before if you like and it was a really traumatic time and one of those things that happens that sort of defines you for a while you know it really did change the path of all of our lives and um, and it was something that um, I hadn't I just hadn't talked about because for whatever reason you don't bring it up in sort of conversation and, and I'm not saying it's the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone people go through horrible things but certainly for us it was a real sort of life-changing kind of f f couple, few years and so when it came back to writing about it to be honest with you, I suddenly went through that whole that whole period again and it sort of brought back all of those those memories it was a really challenging time for us it's conflicting emotions though that can be felt because you don't want people to dislike your dad uh, in the book and yeah. also you talk about him very fondly as well yeah. about how he held court which perhaps may have had some influence for you yes when yeah. it comes to holding court and being you know entertaining people yeah, it's a difficult one because like basically my dad is like a massive comedy fan and he was very, very funny. And like when I, when I, he used to run a pub and when I started doing stand up, I was trying to get more stage time. And he said, why don't you do a gig at the pub? So I started running this gig from dad's pub. And then he got on stage like on the first night. We couldn't get him off. And he told some of the most disgusting jokes <laughs> I've ever heard. But he was like absolutely loving it. But yeah, you're right. The challenge for me was that he did, he was a complex character and. He did do stuff that was was horrible for the family, you know. And so, in writing about that, I'm writing about it, having a fondness for him because he's my dad, and I loved him. And when he passed away, we were very, very close. But you know, we we had a great relationship by the end of it all. But we did go through a difficult time. And then, when you're writing about it, I'm sort of conscious of the fact that people reading the book haven't had those years of growing to love him. So you sort of think, I don't want people to read this and not like him. So that was a challenge with describing all of that. There is so much in the book. It's very funny and very revelatory and honest. And I do have to ask you, though, your book is called Straight Out of Crawley. Yeah. Memoirs of a distinctive, distinctly average human being. Yes. Do you genuinely think you're distinctly average? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just sort of... Uh, uh, I don't know. Everybody has imposter syndrome, don't they? I think you know. Well, you're going to be found out. At some yeah, point. I sort of. I spend most days thinking that somebody's going to tap me on the shoulder and go, "Look, Romesh, I hate to tell you this, but we know." <laughs> so, so we, we like you've been getting away with it for a while. You've had a good run. We've all agreed that if you pack your stuff up and just disappear, we won't say any more about it. You know. So that's. I do, I do genuinely have that sort of. It feels like things are happening to you. I, I still don't feel like a comedian. You know. I, I don't feel like. I don't feel like I'm a proper comedian. I feel like somebody's having a go at doing it and getting away with it, essentially. And probably people will tweet me saying, you are getting away with it. But, but you know, that's how... Well, you that's are getting away with it. Yeah, you I'm made getting us away with it. Yeah. So, well done. <laughs> Ramesh, it's been lovely having you on the sofa. Oh, thank you very thank much you for so having me. Cheers. Uh, five minutes past nine is the time.